The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, we come to you at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what are we doing here today? Well, we had, yeah, I wouldn't call it vapor volume. We had light volume, one of the lightest volume expiration days in a while about uh what about ten and a half billion shares so it wasn't a big day uh neither was thursday uh we're coming in today with uh, about uh six billion shares as we hit this so probably somewhere around nine and a half to ten billion by the end of the day um had a lot of people uh, or it had very few people, excuse me, that were short the market uh, when it started heading down lower. Uh, we got a fairly good taste of it uh, by buying uh, spy puts last week. I didn't hang on to it long enough, mostly because uh, you don't get uh, the kind of action we had on Friday on options expiration that much. I thought it was going to be a big day. Uh, didn't know that uh, that uh, Chairman Powell was going to drop the proverbial baby Ruth in the punch bowl. We're still getting through that. He continued on over the weekend, raining on our parade. Uh, so that's it. Now he's going to talk again on Friday. So the question is, which Powell do we believe? Do we believe the Powell at the last FOMC uh, meeting? Do we believe the Powell from uh, Thursday, well, actually didn't do it uh, overtly Thursday night, but that's when he was starting uh, to uh, talk up, uh, getting a little bit more hawkish, certainly uh, let that rip in several places on Friday and uh, continued on over the weekend, uh, saying that uh, he probably wasn't hawkish enough. And that's kind of really put the uh, – put the uh, – uh, what are they? Don't don't harsh my shroom. What is it? What are the what do the dopers say? You're harshing my uh, something or other. Anyway, uh, so we've got a little bit of that. We don't have a lot of short positions, so there aren't a lot of natural buyers as we've uh, pulled back. So it's just kind of one of these light volume things. It's not uncommon to get this kind of action uh, going into the end of August. I think the market's been a little bit uh, uh, high on its own supply, but uh, I didn't think we were going to get this much kind of late in August. Generally, it's a little bit more sub subdued. Uh, generally, when we do have these kind of m uh, market bottoms, everybody tends to get rather bearish right at the lows, and then we go into lighter volume as we will next week. Uh, into uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, normally, I try to take off uh, on vacations uh, during when there isn't much going on. So I'll be uh, starting my vacation next Monday and be gone till the 6th of September. But uh, eh, generally, there's just a lot of very light volume in that last week. Uh, people that get too short uh, find out that uh, eh, it's problematic. Um, we've been talking about how high the uh, the uh, numbers for uh, the dark pools were, and that connoted that uh, many of the retail folks just weren't involved as much anymore in that push to the highs. Uh, but at the same time, did we get a lot of volume on Thursday's move and Friday's and today's? It's not a real blowout, and there, I wouldn't call it a burning bush in the way of volume either. Um, you know, five, 10% difference is not that 
big. We've had down moves in the neighborhood of 18, 19 billion shares. But even on uh, Friday, we only did about four and a half. Uh, well, yeah, about, uh, what is it? Not four and a half billion. We did uh, 450 billion uh, overall dollars is not big on the scale when we've almost hit uh, a trillion on a single day. So it's kind of light and variable. Um, don't have a lot of people to buy on the way down because they didn't get short. So, um, yeah, we're probably lost a little bit. Uh, people are waiting for some kind of blowout probably to get long again or cover their shorts if they did have short positions. But uh, kind of the standard uh, just a week trading going into the end of uh, of August and uh, Labor Day. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of Jay Powell's uh, talking the market up and then talking talking it down and yeah, it just seems like depends on which week you catch him. Uh, but uh, you know, I've never been a big fan of economists. I've never found any that were right. I remember uh, in uh, I think it was in 2002 or three. Uh, this big organization down here in Florida started saying it was it had uh, great models and it was going to predict uh, hurricanes down here uh, in Florida. And uh, so the first year they predict uh, 12 hurricanes and five named storms. We had nothing. In fact, they started a business of predicting hurricanes and we had the fewest hurricanes and almost no uh, storms that actually hit Florida for about 15 straight years. And that is the problem, trying to predict the unpredictable. But I think, especially economists, the people at the Fed, they think that they can put a caliper on a lot. And for the reality, uh, the economy's maybe what people think it is. And I know that uh, they try to push that around a little bit. But I don't think, you know, they can add and move interest rates up and down. Um, but uh, it's more of the zeitgeist that really determines what's going on. And as far as elections, everything else, uh, I think there's probably no bigger sign out there than the gas pumps for determining what people actually think of the way that the world is going. Now they've come back a little bit, but we've had a kind of a, a long summer of high gas prices and most people looking uh, into the winter are looking at extremely high natural gas prices uh, or uh, heating oil. And uh, you know, it's just a massive tax going forward. We'll be back after this. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. As we come back uh, again, as I said. Uh, at least so far today, we're not seeing any kind of massive uh, exit, but there aren't a lot of people to be natural buyers, not a lot of people being short. Uh, six uh, and a quarter billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, I did have a question. We're not going to do history today. But uh, I did have a question, so I wanted to do this instead. And uh, it was about uh, moving averages. had a question about it. I said I'd talk about it today. I wanted to find this chart. And the question was, why do uh, I don't spend a lot of time talking about moving averages? And why do I think a lot of other folks don't either um, in technical analysis? Well, one of the few things that you know if you've done any uh, signal processing is that any moving average is always 90 degrees out of phase uh, to uh, the underlying signal. So if you have a nine-day moving average, it could be wrong by uh, two and a half days or so. Uh, yeah, two and a third? Yeah, something like that. Uh, so um, generally what a lot of people or, or a lot of technicians did early in, on was decide that what we want to do is we need to kind of uh, lean on whatever the moving average is a little bit to try to help it fix it because it's got a deadly flaw, i.e., it's always going to be wrong half the time. It's going to be wrong the first quarter. It's going to trend with the, the uh, stock um, or, uh, you know, if it was a perfect uh, if it was a perfect sine wave, it's going to be wrong uh, the first quarter. It's going to be right the middle 50 percent, and it's going to be wrong again at the bottom by uh, or at the top, depending on which way you're looking at it, uh, by being early or late 25 percent. So really you end up a, with a signal that's about 50 percent correct, which doesn't do you a whole lot of good. So uh, I tend to like very short-term uh, moving averages uh, and you know if you go back and actually 
uh, go through the data, you're going to find that uh, they can help you trade somewhere around six to nine days. Uh, there isn't much different between six and nine. Uh, past that, you start getting into a lot of other problems. There is a bit of, uh, of a ballistic uh, move in those nine-day, uh, six-day moving averages, i.e., if you fired a gun at 45 degrees up in the air, um, that's going to be the, the longest trajectory. It's going to fly the longest it can. But uh, after it leaves the barrel and goes a little distance, it's going to start uh, being moved around by things like uh, uh, the wind and other things. So uh, the longer it's out of the barrel, you know, you may be shooting into uh, a, a wind. Uh, you may have a wind at your back. So uh, being able to figure out what happens after it goes a little bit, not all the way, but not even up to the apex, tends to be problematic. So what did people do? Well, they decided to try to detrend or take care of that problem a couple of ways. I like the displaced moving average where you take a very short average like three days and then put that line out three days into the future. I like that kind of ballistic look at the market. Uh, the other things that they do is they'll call it an oscillator. And that means if you're using like a 19-day moving average, then you double that to 38. And hopefully the side effects of both of them will null out the problems, kind of uh, like um, the um, noise-canceling headphones uh, that are so popular now, or used to be headphones, now they're earbuds, uh, which do the same thing. They just take the reverse of a microphone that's uh, not got the signal in it and introduce it and try to uh, try to balance out as much as it can. So I, if I was going to use anything, it would be more of an oscillator. And by using two different time frames, you try to null out the weakness in one with the other. And by combining them, you have basically a much better version of it. But as I said, I'm kind of more of a fan of the shorter term ones. Um, you can do some work of your own and take a look at it. You'll see that, you know, you really probably don't want to do a lot. 50 days and 200 day moving averages for higher or lower prices. If you take all the data out there, you're going to see a little blip at 50 you're going to see a little blip at 200 they're pretty small but they are definitely there but guess what they don't go very you should, probably should have a nice bell curve somewhere starting at 190 days and maybe coming back off that at 210 but you don't you see the same thing which you see a, a nice little one or two day blip at 50 and you see a nice one or two day uh, blip at 200 and so does that actually mean anything in the scheme of things for me i don't know how to trade it i've never seen anybody give a good explanation about it other than it's uh, above the 50 day or below the 200 day um i like a lot of the stuff that i use but uh oscillators and uh, generally you want to take one and double it to get the second one i was actually having a conversation about uh, why uh, the uh, oscillator in the uh, um, what is it? Uh, the summation index um, and some of the things with Mc, uh, McClellan oscillators are uh, 19 days and 39 days instead of 38. And it, that you know you have to remember a lot of this technical analysis happened before uh, we had uh, computers of any kind of a decent uh, value. But even at the first computers, when a lot of these stuff were done, they didn't have any math coprocessors. So everything had to be done with integer math. So you'd scale it up. And it uh, just so happens that uh, when you look at the alpha uh, in uh, a 19 and 38 day, it's uh, 0.5 on 1 and, and, uh, and uh, 0.1, excuse me, it's 0.05 on 1 and uh, 0.1 on the other. Uh, it makes it very easy if you're using integer math to scale up and scale down. So uh, eh. they did uh, 19 days and 39 days, which is one more than you would think. But it made it a lot easier on what I would call primitive computers to get that done. So anyway, um, 
90 day, I mean, uh, 50 day, 200 day, am I going to use them? No. Um, if someone can show me uh, some kind of study that really shows uh, there's some kind of uh, pot of gold underneath those, um, well, call in or email me and I'll take a look at it. But uh, I've done the work myself. And is there something there? Yes. Is it small? As far as I can tell, fairly small. And uh, you know, I never can in the stock markets uh, uh, move away from the self-fulfilling prophecy. Where a lot of people use it, so it works. Was there anything underneath it that actually made it work? Or is it just everybody accepts that is the way things are, so it does work that way? Well, to a very small extent, I look at it as a small self-fulfilling prophecy. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, uh, everybody's kind of starting to look for maybe some kind of uh, interday bounce out there. I don't see any signal yet. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, off 90 on the S&P cash. Yeah, 90. Off uh, 635 on the Dow NASDAQ, down 312. Uh, Russell, 43. Crude oil's uh, down 52 cents, so not much action in that. Gold's off uh, about 13 bucks, 17.50. So, yeah, it's kind of a soft market. As we said uh, earlier in the show, in the last week or so, the the uh, dark pool numbers were up fairly significantly on a percentage basis uh, over the last few weeks. So we didn't have a lot of people chase this rally all the way up. Um, we had a lot of people in the lower part. So there aren't a lot of uh, people to, to get really tossed out a lot. Or let me put it this way, a 
much higher majority of uh, shares were bought by uh, big street names instead of retail traders in the 401k. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it, but uh, I don't see any real signal out here. I found some stuff that I want to buy and uh, kind of looks like a fire sale. I don't know if that uh, translates into the more general market out here, but uh, you know, you can have these uh, markets, I've heard them called uh, paper cuts, and that is that they just keep bleeding a little bit after the big gap down. They just keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding until you have some kind of blowout in the low, and that's what you get. But uh, no big uh, outstanding ticks that I see at the moment, and that's generally what you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have a, a decent-sized moment that makes people think, hey, maybe it is actually time to buy. I have a question. Uh, first question of the day is about the TLT. So let's take a look at it. We've been looking for it to get back down to the 112 level. We got that test today. It is on more volume. Uh, to, to What is it? Uh, well, it was more volume on Friday, 16 million shares. We're into that candle again today, but it's lighter volume, about 6.2 uh, million shares of the TLT. That goes into the 15 million share low on July 8th. So, again, you know, it'd be nice if both days had decent volume that exceeded the previous one. So we have one that was a little bit more, and now we have one that's kind of a whole lot less. But we haven't pierced that 112.05, and my guess is that we will do that. That does set up um, a retest of the 108.12 low in the uh, bonds ETF on June 16th. That had 26 million shares. So you had a very nice and high volume low. Actually, back on the 13th of June, you had almost 37 million shares in this. So we are getting back into where there was a lot of volume before. We'll just see whether or not the volume picks up. Maybe that's going to tell us a little bit whether the Fed is as hawkish as they are uh, at least uh, trying to make us believe that they are. Uh, okay, SMA. Uh, <laughs> S uh, t -t -t -s -m -h. Okay, this is a comment from the den. Your SMH view last week was spot on. Thank you. We came back here. I'm not exactly sure or remember what I said, other than we were probably going to retest this low. Would probably be my remembrance of this the ninth low back here on what is that yeah uh august 9th you had uh, about seven million shares you got about two million shares in there today so again not a a massive amount of volume on that one you also have a gap up on the 27th of july with five million shares so do we get back a little bit we could uh, but again, not a lot of volume, but no signal that says this thing's going to turn on a dime and that dime's going to be in your pocket. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, you have to uh, you have to look at it. Uh, that whole paper cut market of uh, of uh, just it just sits there and it's painful. And it just continues to kind of bleed. And every time you touch it, it bleeds a little bit more. It's not like you're going to lose an arm. Uh, it's not dropping 100 points in the S&P at a time, but uh, dropping enough that after the initial uh, gap lower, um, I thought, you know, with the light volume on Friday, there was probably a good chance that we'd go up and retest 4,200 before we would roll over again or make a big decision. And it didn't. We just continued to have that kind of paper cut from the open this morning. Okay. So that's – oh, anyway, the SMH is – certainly you don't have a lot of volume into the previous low. So, um, yeah. On the 9th, uh, 6.8 million shares today. So far, two going back into that. Could you get a little bit more? As I said, there's not a lot of people that are short, so there's not a lot of natural buyers. I tend to give a little bit more error on that side. Uh, let's go back into the usual suspects in VDA. 
And you're down on this one. Uh, the last uh, low that you're into now was on the 9th. It had 66.8 million shares for NVIDIA. Uh, today, you're into it so far with about 28 million shares. Again, just because you're in it with a light volume doesn't mean it can't go lower. It just means that, you know, if you continue with light volume, you're probably going to get a fairly decent bounce and that, that you're probably looking on the right side of the market being a little bit higher, but you don't have any signal yet to say that you should be froggy and start jumping at this. There's just very quiet on the Western front. Uh, anyway, you've got uh, the chance of going back down and testing the previous low. That was at 167.24. And uh, what was the last year? 170.52 on NVIDIA. Um, yeah, if a stock doesn't act right, then um, you're probably not going to make any money. I thought maybe we get, with all the short sellers in NVIDIA and AMD, we probably get a bigger bounce. These stocks are massively shorted over the last few days. But uh, you know what? You've got uh, a a AMD already below the previous low. That was on the 9th also. That had 89 million shares. But you're just into it with 46 million shares. So can you have markets that go up on very little light volume? Yes. Can you have uh, markets go down on very light volume? You can have that, too. Um, I don't see anything else out here than maybe uh, on a chart basis. You have some support at 90-ish. But again, how many people are going to jump in here? I don't see any evidence of that quite yet. Let's go ahead and look at some more in the semi-space which is Micron. Okay. And see. So you're down on Micron. Again, this whole sector, fairly light volume so far today. I mean, we had very light volume on Friday. Kind of in the last 15 minutes, you at least got to get over 10 billion shares. But that's not a huge day. But, of course, August tends to be a little light. Anyway, on Micron, if we go back to the 9th, which is the last low on that, you had 33 million shares today with a 7.2. So SMH is prime for a bounce, but no sign yet. We'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Just in the nick of time. So, had to run to the mailbox real quick. Okay. Let's go back and look and see if anything happened in the last few minutes. Okay. Yeah, we're just kind of drooping a little lower out here. Anyway, we looked at Micron. Um, Got some email here, so let's go through those questions. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, question about Apple. And as I said last week, it was pretty interesting to see how hard they were actually pushing on Apple uh, in the last few moves uh, higher into last week. But even on this one, I'm kind of thinking that we're going to get that double repo pattern if this is going to fail up here. Um, generally, you close underneath the three by three after you've been on the opposite side of it for so long as this one has been. You get the big move down and you don't get a lot of volume. What you start getting then is a move back above it and then the next move down below it is generally where you get the huge volume. So I'm not a... Uh, I'm not saying that this couldn't do a 50% retracement right now. I'm just saying that uh, as far as uh, uh, folding like a $5 suitcase, probably uh, odds are 80% that it doesn't. But it, you could get a couple of days, maybe even the next week. Now, we talked about that being uh, into uh, the Labor Day weekend. Generally, by Wednesday of next week, we see the hedge fund guys all out in the Hamptons or on vacation. Volume really that Thursday and Friday tend to be very light. So could you see maybe something where we have a few days like that this week, maybe a little bit of a, a attempt, go back up on lighter volume and then start seeing September maybe a much uh, bigger move lower you could. Um, what you would love to see is very light volume into the Labor Day on the way down uh, then you might have, if you're bullish, thinking that you have that kind of scenario that launches you into a bullish, eh, probably half of September, last half of September. But uh, remember, September is probably one of the most dangerous months, um, as many of the people on Wall Street sell the old and try to find a faster horse. So you get a lot of both up and down uh, as a trader. Um, yeah, it's generally very good if you can catch the right side. Okay. Da, 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 da. Oh, we have a couple other questions out here. Look at Microsoft real quick. MSFT. And, of course, yeah, you're back down to what should be support. Uh, you went sideways from the 29th of July. Uh, until you gapped up on, what is that, the uh, 10th of uh, August. And 
You know, I never really understood the real pop on this other than maybe too many people were short it. The news wasn't that good. It wasn't bad either. Uh, now, this one's a little bit different in that, you know, most of these days that went sideways from the 29th of, of uh, July had some decent volume. Eh, not monstrous. You went sideways for a while before earnings. But uh, you're back into really the strongest day was 32 million shares on the 29th of July. You're into it with about 12 million shares. We're probably somewhere around support. But again, that doesn't mean just because you uh, are not going down any longer doesn't mean that you're going higher. You want some kind of sign and want to follow that up with a sign of strength. Okay, question about Tesla from John. Uh, somebody made a comment earlier in the den, I don't can't remember who it was, about Ford uh, getting rid of uh, maybe some legacy and uh, uh, positions and General Motors, uh, both of them trying to get into the EV space. Eh, a little bit of the news uh, uh, about that uh, EV space and the uh, Tech Insider this morning, which I think is probably the long term of EV. But uh, so far in Tesla, uh, you're down so far today on 14 million shares. That goes back into a 28, almost 29 million share low on the 9th itself. So at the moment, I don't see a lot. Generally, what you do is do get kind of a bounce. You go higher, you either get volume or you don't. And generally on the next one, that is where you start seeing the real acceleration lower. So generally, again, if you're bullish, you probably want to see this pull back on light volume and continue and shake all the weak hands out. And then you can go higher. If you're bearish, then you kind of want this to go up higher one more time, really have no volume, and then see the bottom drop out. Okay, question about workday. Uh, this, these things were kind of up on light volume to begin with, so it's not a big deal to see these things pulling back. Um, now, again, the volume is kind of a tale of two cities. Depends on which stock you're looking at. Some of them uh, are more than others, but for the most part, not huge volume, at least so far today. Um, you're back into kind of a, a left shoulder over here from about the, what is that, uh, the 3rd of August through the uh, 5th. And those days had uh, about, eh, let's call it an average of about 2 million shares. You get about 1.7 so far today. So this is one probably that looks a little bit weaker to me. You've got two gaps, so expect a third one, or at least I would before I would start playing it. Uh, UNG. Um, again, hard to say that uh, uh, there's any chance for this thing pulling back anytime soon. Uh, now, the only thing is that you did gap above the previous big time high on June 8th. Uh, that had 14.6 million shares. Uh, light volume move at five. Uh, but it is holding that. And again, seasonally strength, uh, strong, uh, very strong through March of next year. So very tough to look at it. Energy was about the same on the way down, on the way up. Uh, but again, uh, a world needing energy and many people trying to cut uh, anybody that's actually trying to produce energy off at the pass. Uh, China has said, uh, I think it was over the weekend, that they're going to buy a lot more of what Russia has in both oil and natural gas. Uh, that may take a little off uh, uh, the world stage. And, of course, the Saudis over the weekend, too, said that they're going to start um, cutting back production a little bit next month. So I, I know it's not crude, but uh, these things kind of go together. And, uh, you know, you really need to, to negate this move, even with a lot of volume. You really need to close below 32.77 uh, to get it. And But, uh, you know, sometimes the fundamentals are just so overwhelming that even on light volume, you got to say it's going to be a tough road to kick uh, natural gas lower. We'll be back after this.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we uh, come to the close of another excellent power trading hour, I got Tom O'Brien sitting in the wings, ready to go and wrap up the day. We'll see, but uh, I'm thinking that it's probably going to be Wednesday before we see much of anything. Of course, today is the first day of options rollover. Tomorrow will be the second. Uh, not uncommon to see kind of that, but uh, yeah, a lot of these things could get, I think, one more gap lower. We probably want to see a lot of people starting to freak out. We don't have that yet. But generally, you want some kind of big tick or something else uh, out here instead of a slow slide uh, of uh, going down a point, another point, not a lot of volume, another point lower. Uh, that drift lower doesn't have to stop anytime soon. It can continue for a while, especially when they're slow. Fast markets tend to... Uh, extinguish themselves fairly quickly and change direction. Uh, this kind of stuff you really want to keep an eye on. Uh, don't get uh, too far out over the tips of your skis if you're short and wait for the whites of their eyes if you think you're going to go long. But uh, yeah, a lot of these could get one more gap lower. I was talking to somebody uh, in the den. Uh, yeah, you could get one. In fact, I'd love that. And then see whether or not anybody really starts getting interested in buying this market at all but no real signal yet just a lot of drift lower uh 
Fed uh, speech on Friday, I think, has a lot of people going on. If I'm right, that's at 1 o'clock their time, which is about 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock our time, last time they had one of those. So I'm, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check into that and we'll talk about it. But uh, it's probably going to be sometime Friday. And the question is, uh, does he try to double down on being hawkish after being kind of uh, sanguine at the last FOMC meeting? So anyway, uh, not a lot to do yet. Uh, wait for the whites of their eyes. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.